What's going on Babylonians? It's me, Songs of Rays, and I'm back on the channel to be able to bring a brand new guide your way. Now today we're going to be covering a brand new game that's coming out, and that is going to be Miasma Chronicles, a game developed by the Bearded Ladies Consulting and published by 505 Games. So before we do go any further, thank you so much to the 505 Games for being able to give us early access to this title to be able to bring some of these guides your way. Now I'm absolutely loving my playthrough of Miasma Chronicles so far and I'm excited to be able to bring a bit more content coming your way because there is a lot of stuff to be able to do with exploration and none more so than this guide being able to explain how to get yourself a bouncer or a tactical disc launcher. But as for the video, what we're going to be discussing is what the Tactical Disc Launcher is, how you're able to find it very early on in this game, why it's important that you do actually grab this because it does turn out to be one of the strongest guns when it comes to this game because of how it behaves and how you kind of have to be able to build your playstyle around it. And then we're just going to be able to explain how to be able to mod it and what makes it so effective. But with all that said and done, why not get started? Let's get into the video. Alright then, so to be able to get yourself your hands on this tactical disc launcher, you do need to progress a little bit into the story. When I say a little bit, that means pretty much just straight past the tutorial, which explains everything to do with movement, combat, everything like that, and then you get yourself into the town. Now, after you've made your way into the town, you've spoke with the mayor, you then get to speak with Bertha Jr., and Bertha Jr. is then going to give you the quest to be able to then progress into the next area, ready to be able to pick up this item. A short way into Gator Zone, you will then be given a special tutorial explaining how you're able to ambush targets and be able to use stealth to your advantage. After you've managed to complete this fight after with the three tadpoles, you will then be able to explore a little bit around Gator Zone itself. I highly recommend doing this because it allows you to be able to pick up plastic, which is the currency in this game, but it also allows you to be able to pick up like collectibles in terms of like being able to fill up your codex. But the main thing that we're going to be looking for is the weapon chest. Now, if you're able to follow the steps over here, the easiest way to be able to describe this is when you went into the arena with the uh, the ambush fight. Over on the left hand side is where you're going to find the broken building and it's going to be the second floor that we're looking to be able to climb up to. If you head yourself around this, uh, this building and then be able to climb up the vines, you will then see the chest that is glowing slightly purple. Opening this up will give you access to the tactical disc or the bouncer rifle. Now just to clarify, this isn't the only way that you can get your hands on one of these, so you will be able to buy them from Bertha Jr, but it makes so much more sense to be able to save your plastic for other items and be able to find this weapon out in the field. So alright, you've picked up the bouncer rifle, well, what makes it so strong, why should you actually use this when it comes to combat? While the bouncer rifle is very unique in the way that it aims and being able to deal damage, instead of something like an assault rifle, which we've already been, been pretty much using since the start of the game, where you kind of have to make sure someone's within a certain range of you, and then you're able to target them to be able to have a percentage chance of hitting, instead the bouncer rifle works from being able to uh, aim at the disc yourself, being able to bounce it off terrain, or objects, or even cover itself, to be able to then like, increase its critical hit chance to be able to do even more damage. How this works is the special ability behind the bouncer is that every single bounce that you do put into the path of this disc will give you a 20% critical chance with a penalty of a 10% hit chance per bounce. This means that if you send it directly at an enemy that is not in cover, this will do a 100% chance of being able to hit, but it will have a very minimal chance of being able to crit, meaning that it's very reliable in terms of like the damage output it has, but then you don't be able to maximize the amount of damage that you will be able to output. The best way to be able to use this is to try and put as many bounces in as possible, but weighing up as to how many bounces it is to be able to land the hit in the first place. What's also unique to the bouncer rifle is that if there's an enemy within cover, where normally if you had an assault rifle you'd have a very minimal chance of being able to land that hit, you can bounce the bouncer rifle or the projectile off a cover to be able to hit them from behind, meaning that the cover penalties do not apply to your projectile. This means that any character that uses this can be safe behind cover as long as they're able to line up the shot to be able to do that damage in the back of the enemy, meaning that they're going to have a fairly reliable way to be able to land that hit. Now it is up to the person using it to be able to decide how many bounces is going to be the most effective to be able to use it yourself. Me personally, I like to aim for around about 70% hit chance when it comes to this, so it, at most I normally aim for around about 3, maybe 4 bounces before it then has to hit the target, and that allows me to be able to maximise the chances that I have of being able to land that critical damage, and on top of that it also gives me a relatively decent amount of chance to be able to then land that hit as well on top of that. Now there are a few caveats to know about the bouncer rifle which means that you can't use this from an elevated position because of how the bouncing mechanic works. You will need to be on the exact same level as the targets that you are fighting when it comes to this, so therefore having some kind of elevation is not going to be beneficial to you whatsoever. 
The other main caveat when it comes to using this compared to something like an assault rifle is the fact that it only has one round needed inside of it before every single reload, meaning that you will be using quite a lot of action points to be able to start reloading this weapon to then be able to fire off another shot. This isn't too much of a problem if you do have your character behind some cover at the back line because you will have plenty of opportunity to be able to get some of those reloads in and then be able to get so many bounces to be able to land that hit. It's important to notice that the damage on this if you don't land a critical shot is going to be fairly low compared to something like an assault rifle and it's actually going to be quite punishing when it comes to that so therefore it's important to be able to try and get as many bounces in as possible to get that critical damage as often and as physically possible. It's because of this reason that I do like to be able to modify my weapon to be able to have the Val E crit rounds, allowing us to be able to have an extra 20 damage on top of our crit damage, boosting it from a 60 to an 80 value. Whichever way you choose to be able to mod the bouncer rifle, it's still one of the best weapons to be able to get early on and to be able to modify your arsenal going forward, and one of the most effective ways to be able to start taking out targets. But anyway, this has been a quick video discussing how you were able to find your first one without spending your plastic, how you are able to use it effectively, and what are the best kind of mods to be able to use as well. With that, that brings us to the end of the video. Massive thank you for making waiting in the video. Massive thank you to the Babylonian family, as always, for their continued support. It really does help the channel out, and you get to see their names at the end of every single one of our videos. Keep your eyes peeled for more Miasma Chronicles guides and gameplay do you come your way to be able to explain a few other kind of things, a few other exploration challenges, and a few other th tips to be able to help you out in the combat side of things. But with all that said and done, that just leaves me to say, keep yourself safe, keep yourselves well, and I'll see you all on the next video.